Hi everyone, this is Phil, and I was about to do a video about a new camera that I bought. I actually filmed some video for it, uh, but then I thought uh, I did two gear videos in, in a row, and uh, that's not all I want to do. Um, so I kind of want to switch it up a little bit and talk about some stuff that I've been enjoying doing, and uh, uh, for once not talk about the cameras. So in my last video I mentioned that I was in a Kibukuro for a reason that had to do with photography, and uh, this is it. So I was there uh, actually visiting a rental darkroom. And what I was there for in specific was to make some prints for my negatives. So there's a lot of material and videos on YouTube uh, about how to do uh, prints in the darkroom. And most of those are for uh, black and white darkrooms. Um, but I actually was there to do prints for my color negatives. So I, I've only done this a couple of times, um, so I am by no means the expert on this topic, uh, but I thought it would be fun to give you a little insight in what I was doing in the dark room um, and uh, show you some of the results. So I only grabbed a, a few minutes of uh, footage in the dark room. Um, the main issue with doing this is uh, a colored dark room, unlike a uh, black and white uh, darkroom which has a red safe light. Uh, colored darkroom has to be perfectly dark um, for the initial steps. So it's very hard to do a video in there unless you have a night vision uh, camera which unfortunately I don't. Um, and also I was there to do work on my uh, prints and I wasn't specifically there to film so uh, I only have a little footage um, and uh, as I said, I'm by no means an, an expert on this matter, uh, but I hope you will enjoy uh, watching my process a little bit and uh, seeing some, some of the results. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with this, and uh, I hope you will enjoy seeing it too. All right, so first off, here's a little overview of the darkroom that I've been printing in. First off, you can see a bunch of my negatives. And then here's the four baths that the paper goes through. Um, so off to the left, you have the uh, developer, that's the red liquid. And then you have a Blix bath, uh, which is bleach and fix. And then uh, two baths of water. And uh, you'll see in a second why there's two of these. And then in the end, here's the enlarger. Up on top of the enlarger head, you can see there's sliders for color. And the way I've learned it is to use only the bottom two, the magenta and yellow sliders, um, because uh, once you start using the cyan slider as well, um, it introduces so much more complexity to the colors that you end up never settling on anything. So as I mentioned, the color darkroom has to be completely dark. So you need to have a, a good sense of where everything is uh, and orient yourself in that dark space. And then, of course, the first thing is uh, to actually expose your paper. And I tried to film this. Turns out it's actually very hard to frame anything uh, in complete darkness with your phone screen taped over. So uh, do forgive me for that. So after you expose the paper, um, you put it in the developer bath. This is still in perfect darkness. Uh, once you've developed it, and I usually do this for about a minute, then you take it out and put it in the blicks. Once it's completely submerged in the Blix, you can turn on the lights. And this is when you'll finally get to see your image uh, come through on the paper. Uh, once it starts coming up in the Blix, um, this is a pretty dark liquid, um, so it doesn't really show the colors or anything. And once you pull it out, um, you put it over into a water bath, uh, which removes the remaining Blix, and then you can see the, the colors coming through. This remaining Blix, um, dissolves in the water and turns it yellow over time. So um, these are not the actual colors of the print and that's exactly why you have the second water bath. And then all that's left to do is get your prints out of the water bath and let them dry. All right, let's go over to the dining table and I'll show you some examples of the prints that I made. So all of these prints are from a series that I've been doing uh, with the Besa RF in uh, Nakano Broadway, which is basically a shopping mall full of stuff related to uh, toys and anime and uh, manga. And I've been doing uh, some shots 
with double exposures of uh, vintage toys. This is a series that I've been enjoying a lot. Uh, this is mainly what I use the Besa for these days. So in the color dark room, um, you can tweak a lot of things. So of course you can tweak uh, how light or dark the image is, uh, but you can also fiddle with the color. So once you uh, fiddle with the sliders on the uh, enlarger head, then you can get a different color balance. Uh, this is much like um, the color sliders in Photoshop or in uh, Lightroom. I felt that this has a little too much green in it and uh, I wanted to accent the reds and the blues a little more. Um, so I changed the settings and uh, this is the next print that I got. Then I tried to push it a little more into the red and orange side of things. I tend to like warm images more than uh, cold color balances. Um, so this is the next result that I got. And I thought this was a little over the top, so it has a lot of orange in it. Um, the blue of the central figure here uh, didn't pop as much in, as in the previous one. Um, so I actually prefer this one uh, to this one. And then I also uh, tried to influence the uh, lightness of the image some more. Um, so this is an, a print that I got when I tried to make it a little darker. Uh, in retrospect, I think the second one is the best of these. And uh, if I ever do end up uh, doing some kind of exhibition or a zine or something, um, that's probably the one I would use. So the next image that I'm going to show you is what I consider to be symbolic of this whole series. And it's one of my favorite prints from this series. So this is a double exposure uh, of some uh, soft vinyl toys uh, in a pretty dark showcase and then overlaid with some other showcases and, and some other toys. Uh, you might see some Smurfs in there and uh, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, framing I think of, of the, the red soft vinyl here and uh, the, I like the highlights of the showcase here and, and overall this, this whole uh, composition and the, the colors of this, this uh, photo is something I really like. This is, I think, uh, my initial uh, version of this print, but I wanted to see if I can uh, accent the red a little more and uh, get a different color balance. Um, so I've noticed the Lomography 800 film uh, tends to get a bit of a green or tealish tint uh, whenever you have these uh, fluorescent lights in there, uh, which sometimes it works great, uh, especially if you have some warm, uh, darker tones in there. Um, so if you have some brown, um, that usually contrasts really well with this tealish heights highlights. Uh, but for this one, uh, I felt the green was a little strong here. Um, so I tried to make it a little uh, less green and more towards the bluish. Um, so this is what I ended up with. Uh, and I made a different version of this as well, uh, which has uh, adjusted uh, highlights a little bit too. So uh, you can see the shadows on this one are a little darker on the on, than on the other one. So I, I like how this turned out, um, but it feels like a different uh, photograph to me now. Uh, it's a little too blue. Um, it kind of feels a little more digital. Uh, it lacks a little more of that analog feel. Um, and and uh, as I've said, I, I prefer uh, warmer tones a little bit. Um, so I dialed that back a little bit and this is the next one I came at. So you can see um, this is a little less blue, especially in this area where, where it has had the biggest green cast there. And the red uh, soft vinyl here is caught in a little bit of a dark area and it's a little murky. Um, so I went back on that a little bit gave it a little of that green shimmer back and uh, punched up the highlights a little more. And this is, uh, I think, the version of this image that I settled on. So as you can see, um, there is no perfect answer for anything. Uh, this is all based on preference. And unless you have something uh, like a gray card in there, you can actually balance off of, there is no limit to what you can do with the colors. One thing that you can't directly influence uh, on the enlarger head itself 
uh, is the contrast. So as a long time digital user, I was looking for some way to, to punch up the contrast. And uh, as you can see, this paper is kind of glossy. And the first print paper that I actually printed on uh, was not. So the first image I ever printed of this negative was on this uh, kind of semi-gloss, uh, slightly matte Fuji paper. And uh, that turned out really murky and I was really unhappy with how this turned out. Um, so that's why I, I went to the glossy paper this time. So you can see um, there's a big, big difference in uh, contrast on these images. So this, was, this turned out really, really murky um, because of the matte finish. I think the matte finish uh, might be a nice thing to have um, on uh, something like portraits. Um, it gives it a little softer feel. Um, it takes down the contrast. And uh, overall, I think for these images, while I personally uh, preferred the look of uh, matte finishes, I think for, the, for my images on this series, um, the glossy paper really worked a lot better. Another issue that you have to consider when you're printing in the darkroom uh, is that the initial colors you get on the paper uh, right after you pull it out of the developer liquid are going to be a little different from how it looks when it dries. Um, so I have some images uh, that I did on my first visit to the darkroom and uh, these are from a recent trip to Scotland. Um, these were shot in Sky. And uh, I really, really love these images. Um, and I thought I had nailed the color balance. These are on Ultra Max, but unfortunately, as it turns out, uh, once you take them out of the, the last uh, bath and you dry them, uh, they actually get a little darker and a little greener, bluer. Um, so these definitely turned out a little more greenish uh, and bluish than I would have liked. So this is another one. Um, this is from uh, Tama in Tokyo. This is actually uh, one of the far west areas of Tokyo um, that are great and have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, foresty areas and they're really nice. I hope you enjoyed this trip into the darkroom with me. Uh, I've done this about four times now. Uh, I really enjoy seeing my images up close and large and uh, seeing what can be done with the colors, uh, brush them up a little bit. Uh, I would love to um, get better at this, uh, be able to crank out more images, maybe have an exhibition of my own uh, at some point. Uh, I'm definitely planning on doing a zine of my uh, Nakano Broadway series. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I was actually able to film my first order of a print. Uh, my friend Gigi asked me for a print of this image, um, which is actually a double exposure of uh, a Takashi Murakami uh, exhibit in Nakano Broadway and some red um, lights of, of a mock-up uh, restaurant in, that's in the same building. Um, so I thought these this image is uh, really aligned well and uh, they make for an interesting uh, image when combined. Um, so I'm glad I was able to print this and it printed really well. Um, I'm really happy with it and uh, I'm definitely gonna go back. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please join me in the next one. Uh, drop me a comment if you have any questions or if you have any comments on what I got wrong about the process. Do check out my Instagram uh, and I hope to see you again.